Hello everybody and welcome to Learning at Home with Mrs. V. So today we're going to talk a little bit more about equivalent fractions and how to find them. So I think the key to equivalent fractions is knowing and remembering your count bys when you were first learning multiplication. So I'm going to write count by out here and you'll start seeing why I'm asking you to remember count bys um, once we get started. So say, for instance, we've got one-fifth, all right? Now, one-fifth, if I wanted to take this and create equivalent fractions to one-fifth, and you know what? I'm going to kind of make him front and center. One-fifth. So if I wanted to take this and I wanted to multiply this, and I wanted to, well, I want to take this and create equivalent fractions. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by the same number. So I'm going to start off with 2. So if I multiply the top and the bottom times 2, I'm going to create an equivalent fraction of 1 -fifth. And um, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply one, 1 times 2. And so that gives me 2. 5 times 2, which gives me 10. All right. Now, how can I prove that these are equivalent? Well, I could draw a picture. So I could draw a candy bar that looks like a Kit Kat. You know, I'm always thinking of food. All right, so I've got one, two, three, Four. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. Well, that's awfully big. So I'm going to take this and cut this like that. All right. So one fifth. So one fifth would be right here. So I've got one fifth of this candy bar. Well, how in the world could I show this as tenths? Well, I want to create a candy bar that's the same length, and I want it to be the same size this way too. And so I'm guesstimating with my fingers. All right, all right, so there we go. This line is a little wavy. I'm gonna redo this line. And this time, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna create fifths, but I'm going to do something different with it. One two, three, four, five, and then I'm going to create tenths by cutting each one of these in half, which this is really not easy to do, and I know some of these are going to be a little bit wavy because of my marker. All right, so now I've got tenths. So I want to color in two tenths. So if I color in two tenths, I'm coloring in right here. If I could pick this up and put this candy bar on top of this candy bar, I would have exactly the same amount of that Kit Kat bar taken or eaten. So this is showing one fifth. This is showing two tenths. It's exactly the same amount, all right? Now, what if I went ahead and I multiplied the numerator and denominator times three? I'm going to create another equivalent fraction. So one times three is three, five times three is 15. Now, if I could cut this into fifteenths and color in three of them, I would still have one fifth of the candy bar colored in or eaten, taken. Okay, I can keep going. I can keep doing, I can do times four and get four twentieths. I can erase this. I can do times five and get five twenty-fifths. All of them are equivalent to or equal to one-fifth, my original fraction that I had up there. Now, do you see why I kind of why I did count by? Look at this. I've got two, three, four, five at the top, but look at the bottom. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. 
Hmm, I wonder what would be next. Aha, 30, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Aha, uh -huh. see where I'm going with this? Now, what would be next, counting by fives? Well, that would be 35, and I would have seven. Now, look at this again. I've got fifths. One times five, one times five is five. Two times five is 10. Three times five is 15. That's where the count by comes in. Ah, pretty sneaky, huh? All right, so we did fifths to begin with, and I have my wonderful picture, and I've got to erase it. Okay, so let's go on and let's do, um, and you saw our pattern. So let's see if that pattern continues if we do eights. All right, so again, my count by. All right, so I've got, let's do times two, times two. So again, I've got two, one times two is two, eight times two is 16. Aha! I think I'm seeing the same pattern. Let's try another one before we solidify our thoughts with this. One times three is three. Eight times three is 24. Wait a minute. This is looking oddly familiar. So eight times one is eight. Eight times two is 16. Eight times three is 24. So we've got a four next. So what's going to be that denominator? Hmm. Eight times four, 32. All right. Then we have five for my, our numerator. Eight times five is 40. Aha. These are all equivalent fractions to one eighth. Interesting. Count bys come in handy. If you learn them in third grade like you're supposed to, they're invaluable. All right, so let's do let's do one with a different um, numerator than a one. Let's do um, two sixths. All right, so we'll start with two sixths. So let's see how this one plays out. So let's do times two times two. So it worked with when the numerator was one. So let's do, um, we've got four, and then we've got twelfths. Hmm, interesting. So what happens if we change this to three? Hmm, so let's do, let's see, six times three, that's 18, and then this is six. So let's see, um, we've got, Oh, I notice here, wait a minute, this is plus six. So, hmm, and this is four, six. I wonder if this next one, I'm noticing that these are even numbers. So I'm wondering if eight and then six more, eight twenty-fourths would be next. I'm going to put a question mark there because I think I'm seeing a pattern. Let's see, let's do four, so that'd be twenty-four, eight. Aha, uh -huh. I think I've got the pattern. Let me see here. Okay, so five and five. So that would be six more would be 30, right? 30, okay. And then this would be another even number. Yep, that would be 10. You know, but we don't have the one here. How can we get this and make that a one? Because I'm thinking that because we didn't start with one, we're skipping part of the pattern. So, hmm, how can I get this to be a one? I know I could divide this by two, right? And that would give me one. So that would get my numerator to one. But what I do to the numerator, I have to do to the denominator. So six divided by two, that's going to give me three, one third. So one third, two sixths, four twelfths, six eighteenths, eight twenty-fourths, ten thirtieths. So one third would be our starting point. One, two, where did the three go? Hmm. So if I multiply this times three, times three, I get 
three knights. Hmm. One, two, three, three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen. Where would the fifteen come in? I'm missing the fifteen here. So I can take this one third and I can do five and five. And I can do five fifteenths. So I've got one third, two sixths, so that's two times. And then I've got three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one. Okay, so I'm missing some in here that would also be equivalent to two sixths and one third. Do you see how this works? How we can find equivalent fractions? All right, so we're going to be working on how to multiply a numerator and denominator times the same number to get equivalent fractions. Using a count by can be really helpful in forming the, or getting the pattern together. Um, also, when you don't start with a 1 in the numerator, um, sometimes the pattern can look a little different. Okay? All right. Equivalent fractions, got to learn them, got to know them. I want you to keep watching, keep thinking, always stay curious, and I'll see you next time.